Good evening, Kevin. How are you? I'm very, very well. Uh, not as well as Gary Lineker, who's on £1.36 million a year, which is, uh, you know, slightly more than I earn. Uh, do you think that uh, this transparency, sending this message, we've taken 10% off the big stars' salaries, that that will send a message that will please licence fee payers? Or will they conclude that astronomical sums are still being paid to people for doing jobs that don't seem to warrant that amount of money? Well, I'd question the argument that they don't warrant that amount of money. After all, the BBC's iPlayer stream alone this year has reached 6.1 billion streams. That illustrates the extent to which the BBC is now a genuine global player. It's always been an international player but it has become a truly global player. And it's competing in a global market. And that global market contains giants like Netflix and Amazon. And by comparison with the money that they're prepared to spend on production and prepared to spend on salaries, the salaries being paid to stars like Gary Licker and Zoe Ball, or to news presenters like Hugh Edwards, are actually very reasonable. The BBC is a British institution which is more widely recognized around the world than any other British broadcaster and in fact more recognized than many other British institutions and on that basis a 10% cut in its salaries at a time when it's becoming even more impressive as a player in the digital global market I think is pretty impressive so yeah I think the BBC's got a great deal to be proud of and licensed payers are getting very good value for money. Uh, well, I'm not necessarily here tonight, Tim. I'm usually here to knock the BBC, but not necessarily. I'm just trying to find out what's going on here. Uh, you know, point taken. You say Gary Lineker, Zoe Ball and the like warrant uh, their nice big salaries. Why then does the BBC feel the need to make a big song and dance about we've cut 10% off their salaries? The BBC is constantly under scrutiny and under scrutiny to an extent which doesn't apply to many other broadcasters in this country. Yes, it's now regulated by Ofcom, but it's also a corporation which charges a universal license fee. We all have to pay £157.50 in order to watch it, to get its radio programmes, to read its online content. And in return for that payment from the public, the BBC is subject to very diligent and very reasonable scrutiny. I've got no objection to that. I just think that that scrutiny on this occasion reveals that the BBC is performing at a level which merits what it currently costs. That's not always the case, but certainly at the moment, the BBC is looking good. And let's face it, it's under the leadership of a man with a great deal of commercial experience. It's, it's controller in Tim Davey, it's Director General in Tim Davey, and Richard Sharp, the Chairman, are really doing a very good job of fitting the BBC for the modern world. And I think that we ought to give them a degree of leeway because they are working in a very competitive market. After all, they've got excellent commercial radio stations like Talk Radio competing with the best of their radio. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Um, well, yeah, fair enough. Uh, but uh, it is this perennial annual problem, isn't it, that uh, a lot of the viewers... They think, well, Gary Lineker, nice guy, knows his football, but is he really worth £1.36 million a year? And the same would go for uh, Zoe Ball. Uh, she's a breakfast DJ. Uh, no other radio station uh, in the commercial sector would be playing a breakfast DJ a million pounds a year. Uh, there well, are, I mean, that, the, there are these not, anomalies, I think, in these papers. They're, they're not anomalies, Kevin. Uh, I mean, you, it's a, it's a, it's a well-argued point, but I think that sometimes... Commercial radio does itself no service by attacking the BBC so quite quite so directly because you're doing a fantastic job too. And one of the reasons for that is we have extraordinarily high quality broadcasting in this country. It leads to fantastic competition and means that we have on both sides of the fence, public and commercial, really truly world class broadcasters. And I include talk radio in that description. What you do is fantastically good. But what the BBC does is fantastically good. It sets a standard which is recognized around the world. And you ask the question, is Gary Lineker worth 1.36 million pounds? Well, 
how much would international broadcasters pay Gary, Gary Lineker to do that job? I was a BBC executive when Gary first started working for the BBC. He'd come from a football pitch where he earned proportionately a great deal more than that. And he took learning to be a broadcaster very seriously indeed. He was determined to be as good at broadcasting as he was at centre forward. And Gary Lineker was a very good centre forward. He's also a very good broadcaster. And there are broadcasters around the world, some of whom actually do use him, who would be prepared to pay him at least what he gets from the BBC. So I think to argue that Gary Lineker isn't worth what he earns, well, it's probably less than he earned at any time in his role as a professional footballer. And actually, he's as good at broadcasting as he was as a footballer. So I think that salary is probably a very fair reflection. I think it was also very generous of Gary Lineker, very decent of him to take a £400,000 cut on that salary this year. I'd be happy with the £400,000. Uh, yeah, so would I. Uh, but he, you know, don't get me wrong, Tim. He's he's very good at the job. Uh, no one is uh, attacking his uh, undoubted talent as a broadcaster. Uh, what about this aspect? This is something that uh, struck me. For example, Claudia Winkleman, uh, who hosts uh, Strictly Come Dancing, of course, as well as a Radio Two show. Uh, apparently, we don't get to see the full nature of her BBC income because. Strictly Come Dancing is a BBC Studios production. Uh, that sounds a bit like sophistry. I mean, surely uh, if they're going to be transparent about what the stars are earning, whether or not it's the BBC or BBC Studios, uh, shouldn't uh, matter at all, should it? Shouldn't we find out what she's earning if we're to know what everyone else is earning? Well, I mean, of course, in the end, you will know. But Claudia Winkleman's salary through BBC Studios is a commercial arrangement, and BBC Studios is the BBC's commercial arm. It's not funded through the licence fee, and it's not supported by that licence fee. It has to operate in the commercial market, and so the BBC applies different rules to it, and so does the law. I would be tempted to say that I share your view that most licence payers won't understand that distinction and that it might be in the interest of the BBC not to try to make that distinction. But it is a legitimate distinction. It's just a difficult one to explain to viewers who see Claudia Winkleman in both roles and wonder why she's not attributable in one and is in the other. But, you know, these are some of the complexities. I think sometimes the BBC doesn't do itself any favours by standing on these complexities. And I would probably take the view that it would be better to simply announce what she earns. But a I, I reckon that the probable reason for that is that in her case, and the many other stars who work for BBC's commercial arms, they would prefer to maintain confidentiality. And of course, they're entitled to ask for that. I was going to ask you, Tim, about uh, this change of logo, uh, which I don't think was particularly good optics when it comes to publicity. The BBC spent sort of, they think, about £50,000 changing the logo of the BBC to something that looks extremely similar at all. Uh, and I just think it's unfortunate timing when the BBC's trying to uh, project an image of trying to save money by taking 10% off the stars. But I think we're talking about £50,000. So in the great scheme of things, it's hardly worth us discussing. I just wanted to park that there. I think a more important question to you uh, is, uh, you know, was it wise of the BBC to get into this transparency, uh, you know, by uh, basically telling every star that ever works for them, uh, well, uh, we will have to tell the public what you earn. And we know that many celebrities really don't like that. Graham Norton, for example, uh, you know, he uh, sort of stopped doing his Radio 2 show uh, because he was sick of them publishing his salary every year. I don't think Chris Evans was very keen on it either. So it is a possible way uh, to, uh, what's the word, um, uh, to, to disencourage uh, celebrities coming the BBC's way, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you're right, it might well deter talent, and that's a big challenge. But I think the answer is, um, you, know, you make a very important point, Kevin, the BBC is subject to a level of scrutiny that no other broadcaster in Britain faces. But that's appropriate because we all pay for it. Mm -hmm. It's a public property. It costs us £157.50 a year in licence fee. And the BBC was dragged, frankly, kicking and screaming to the level of accountability it now has. After all, it used to be regulated by its own board of governors and is now regulated by Ofcom, which is 
absolutely appropriate because Ofcom is our national broadcast regulator. It regulates you at Talk Radio and ensures that you maintain very high standards of honesty, integrity, decency and accuracy, which you do consistently and with great skill. Why shouldn't the BBC face the same scrutiny? It's been forced to do that. And the consequence for the BBC of facing that scrutiny is that in addition to its obligations through the licence fee, that means that it faces a great deal of judicious, careful public scrutiny. Now, I don't think that's a problem. I think the BBC just has to live up to very high standards. It has to be meticulous in what it does. And sometimes, and I'm going to go back to that £50,000 on rebranding, sometimes it still has too many civil servants or people with civil service mentality in its senior leadership team. People who think, oh, look, we've got some great designers. We haven't changed the logo for a while. Let's do it. I would say, no, actually, don't bother. The BBC <laughs> logo has been well recognised for a very long time. It says BBC. That's a global market. It's a global brand. And um, when you use the 1955 version, 1992 version, or the current version, people will get it because BBC resonates around the world. Why waste £50,000 on that? You could spend it making programmes. Exactly right. Uh, and it still says BBC, and it looks uh, uncannily similar to its predecessor.